that is so um thank you all for joining today uh so today we're going to see um the trade off chapter 16 which is basically a um, very short chapter just discussing the advantage and disadvantage between the um different oop principles we have seen in our and um, basically i have i think three or four slides um, um, so the chapter started by recommendation by Hadley, which does um, overall recommendation on which OP system one chooses. So if you one is basically um, accustomed with our ecosystem, um, for example, Tidyverse and you know general ecosystem for R, so Hadley recommend X3 because it is simple and widely used throughout this R. And with that, since it is widely used, it does have many support. So uh, uh, many issues you have uh, been solved and it does have some level of good documentation. So S3 is way to go for people with um, one road to R. They are not coming maybe possibly from other programming language like Python and but if someone coming from other programming language, um, he may be more inclined to use RCs, as Hadley said. But um, uh, the two things Hadley um, uh, give disadvantage of that is like, um, so you may actually do your stuff in RCs, but they, will, they are not actually uh, more friendly to native R users so they will feel old and also um you lose out the le new learning opportunity uh on using the OOP tool for uh, s3 so these are basic recommendation of for um uh, hardly overall recommendations so i'm not sure like um i mean hannes maybe you have experience um, um do you particularly been using s3 uh, or you sometimes use R um, RCs. Uh, so I just joined. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we are talking about um, the overall recommendation from Hadley, where he said basically um, S3 is more recommended for people that comes from originally base R. With R, they have um, RCs or people that are coming from other programming language, they feel more tilted toward RCs because the structure and the logic tally with other programming language. But he said, if you are going to be using R, um, so you are called or other some, uh, non you may have non idiomatic API with other native R users. They may not be accustomed with your code and stuff like that. And also, you may lose new way of thinking OOP in R in S3. So what's your recommendation feelings to add this as well? I mean, well, I, I think it's good to use S3 because just as, as you said, the most thing is probably that users expect to work, yeah. that it works like this. And I think that's the main point. Yeah, because sure. if, I, if I make a package and no one knows how to yeah. use it, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so it is worth learning S3 to uh, then RC, yeah. So to have good understanding of R S3, then all right, good. Okay, so that's basically the main recommendation for Hadi. So, but um, Hadi moves on to do some kind of comparison between S3 and S4, and also S3 and uh, S6. So, uh, um, between S3 and S4. Um, they have the, some basic underlying ideas between S3 and S4, but one thing with S4, it is most formal um, in the sense that um, it is more strict as also um, it does have some kind of um, more adopted by teams, but um, S3 relies on some kind of um, rules um, that are flexible and easily abused rather than with S4 has a kind of structure that cannot be easily abused so it does have some kind of maybe documentation that these are the structure you need to follow but um 
S3, it does have some kind of this kind of informal rules. Everybody can do whatever he felt like. So this kind of strictness for S4 is lend itself to being used by teams, larger teams, because we it is strict. It does have some kind of um, uh, uh, kind of uh, non flexibility to do some stuff. So uh, it's more suited for teams and in that way it's in their kind of uh, documentation or some kind of uh, structure you don't need to train more people to do because yeah and that's why s4 is therefore uh, more used in bigger project like bioconductor um as we know maria or maria let us time talk about them um, it's used for s4 um how do you give one exact give one example for this package matrix where it does have it's uses implemented using S4, but it does have this kind of massive method. Uh, I think 2000, 2005 method, one or two classes, two zero one generic functions. This is massive. I mean, does anyone think of any other package with something <laughs> better than this? <laughs> Because uh, matrix involve a lot of uh, multiplication between different kind of, you know, uh, yeah, so uh, it does have some kind. So that's why he said um, S4 is suited for this kind of complex structure. So S4, because it does have um, kind of uh, structure that can be easily followed. Yeah. All right. So um, the biggest challenges of X4 is lack of uh, documentation. And so, uh, that's the, as Hadley said, um, it lends, book lends treatment, but the book doesn't exist. So, I mean, so what is the takeaway here? I, I'm thinking like now, if I'm going for um, S3, S4, and it does have kind of this kind of documentation, can the team also adopt S3? What do you think? What is your thinking? Um, because um, the S3 does not have this kind of complexity structure for S4, where it does have some kind of different kind of hierarchy. It can handle all those kind of hierarchies. S3 does not have that compared to um, S4. So if teams want to do that uh, for complete, can they adapt S3? What do you think, guys? Uh, okay. I, I mean, if you are working in a team, you have to make anyway some rules. So, yeah. And 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 if you define rules, it probably doesn't matter if you use S four or S three. Okay. Okay. I, I would say I, it's a problem more problematic if it's open source. So mm -hmm. there is probably better if it's S four okay. because it's more strict. All right. Okay. I, I I would think so, but I I yeah. don't know. Get, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, a reason with you, um, you say like, um, if it is like within the team, you know each other, you can define your robot. Um, if it is documentation, I mean, it, it is open source. Many people you don't know may come to conduct, so it become quite complex to follow certain structure and rules. Yeah, so yeah, S4 can go with also S3 uh, team. So and last, my last slide is it the last slide. Yeah, um, so hardly um, S3 versus S4. So the S3, they are completely different way of system S3 uh, uh, compared to RCs. Uh, one of the main thing is that RCs is built on encapsulated objects rather than generic functions. So S3, they are functional. Uh, S3 is functional and therefore feels natural to average R users. And, RC does not because R is functional. So this is one of the uh, key difference between, yeah. Uh, S3 names spacing is, is global and RC is local to the object. So um, this is one good difference between S3 and RC um, that is naming spacing. Uh, so global namespacing allow multiple packages to use the same valve working with different types of object. Um, but it does have some kind of limitations uh, that you may actually not 
try to use um, this because like if you want to use the same name for the functions, uh, you may need to use uh, this kind of things to assess the function object. So, uh, but that's not the case in RCs. In RCs, you can actually use the Della signs to assess the object. So uh, it makes sense um, to know this. This is basically the differences. Um, I don't understand this one, so maybe one can jump in where he said RCs object have reference semantics, which means that they can be modified in place. So I tried, I don't know if someone can chip in here. Uh, I don't understand what he, um, Hadley meant with these points. Uh, yeah, I think that's the environment, right? R6 looks up the namespace environment and gets it from there, whereas S3 is a little different. That's my understanding. Okay. Yeah, because R6 is an environment in the background, actually. So, yeah. Um, that that was, I can't remember which chat that was, but the thing that's why loops are slow. Yeah. Be because in, in normal R, objects get cop copied each time. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and here, the, the, the objects are not don't copied. get copied. Yeah, they, they are oh. ac actually. Um, edited or exchanged. Oh, okay, okay. So this means they can be modified in place. They are not copied. Exactly, exactly. I, I remember, I think we discussed this in this chapter six where we discussed, is it um, is it vectors or loop? I think in the iteration chapter where we discussed those. Yeah, I remember, okay. Yeah, and and, and there, there he talks also, you could use environments. That's what Paul Chivan said. You could use environments to to uh, work around this problem, but he mm -hmm. also said that's that's not a good idea. And mm. R6 uses more or less in the background environments because environments modify in place. All right, okay. okay. So I think that's the last part of the um, comparison between the S3 and RCs. Uh, uh, yeah, um, so um, yeah, this chapter is just like a few feet and, and um, so uh, this is the end of the presentation. Uh, today we have very thin few, few slides. So I, I was saying um, the next, um, we have come to like 70% of the book. We covered now foundations, we cover functional programming, we covered object-oriented programming. Now the next one is meta programming and um, techniques. So. We have the first one, which is big picture. Mariela already signed up. So I don't know, um, we have 18, 19, and so we need volunteers now so that we they can prepare, right? <laughs> Before the, and um, I know Joan is looking at the chapters right now, which one he's gonna choose. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, so I think, um, do we need to, um, yeah, we don't need to, um, we don't need any break. Yeah, we just jump to the next chapter next week. All right. You, uh, maybe you can also remind the others in the in the private channel, channel that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. And just because your last slide picked the topic up of the double colon to, to um, always reference to the correct package, so mm, yeah. I, yes. I, 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 I now really run frequently in that problem that my code is not working because of that problem. So now uh -huh. I'm really forcing myself to always use the double column to reference the correct package. I, I don't know how you handle that or if you are also running in that problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually started using it. Uh, um, right now um, because of the, when we started these um, chapters, uh, OP, but I have not been using it at all actually, <laughs> but now, yeah, I mean, I learned, uh, yeah. What are you doing, Jen, with uh, OP? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, yeah, so yeah, what kind of stuff are you using it in? You said you, you've been using it. Ah, okay. So it just practice. Um, I have not been working on something um, to uh, in production, but just um, the exercises on the chapter, just trying to uh, nail the concept. Uh, yeah.
finding some working through some code yeah yeah so like think about op for me like i understand what they read you know taught in the book and Johannes, thank you so much for walking us through two of the major uh uh systems that really helped me but yeah i don't know like when i would where i would immediately use this in you know ah. Okay. I would just go back to functional programming. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not really good at all. At all. Yeah. When you're writing your package, you know what I mean? Um, you need to write classes. Um, I think this is one of the uh, main points. Um, you need to use this kind of stuff. When you are writing your package, um, you need to actually, you may not constrain yourself on using those tidy stuff, you know what I mean, um, at season. So you need to construct classes, you need to call from these because you have different functionality uh, that your package does. So to handle such kind of co complexity, so you need OOP system, I think. I don't know if um, Hannes can talk. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't make any package so far, but yes, I can see the point to use uh, OOP in packages. Uh, the, the thing is, I don't use R for stuff where I would need OOP because OOP has the reminder thing, and that's what I use often for web uh, de development. And for web development, I use TypeScript, which is actually OOP. Um, <clears throat> But I don't need it in R. I only need functions in R. So I, mm -hmm. I also don't have any point to use it so far. I mean, it's really good to know, especially R6 and R S4 to just, if you use a package to just know a little bit more, just take a little bit out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to add to this, uh, so our team actually uses S4. Uh, there's one big project that we work on uh, multiple users uh, and uh, there are a bunch of functions which are used across the project. So for these purposes, uh, you know, S4, uh, it's, it's uh, really helpful there. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I understand that if you're just developing, uh, just testing out stuff or uh, using it to, using R to create a notebook visualizations, it doesn't really make sense to use classes. But if uh, you are developing a code base for uh, you know larger number of users, then uh, yeah. of course like OOP will come in handy. Yeah. So yeah. So um, I was like um, um, within the week um, reading a package, uh, Contida, uh, a package for useful text analysis, um, and I was like having some issue trying to understand the stuff how it doesn't work. I had to go through the code uh, for the packet. And if I don't know this OOS, I would not understand the code because it is written in OO system. So I need to go through it and understand it and get graphs of what is really happening so that I can borrow the code from their own and come and do it in my own system. So I think that helps me because I have the understanding of OO uh, and yeah, just pick them. If I don't really have that, kind of understand completely, I will not even understand the code. So I think that's also helpful to go into the other people's code and package big project to understand it. So if uh, you have the old, it will make sense for you. And and I think you, I, the whole functional OLP, that's a whole paradigms and there's a lot of fighting actually in developers, which is better and worse. I mean, I personally think just take the one which for your job feeds the best. So you don't need to focus only functional or only OLB. Just just use what what's best works best for your job. And like Rahul said, um, they are a big team, so they're using S4 because that fits them perfectly. So why not? And to just know different paradigms is great, more or less, because yeah. you, you can use them and you can understand it a little bit, I mean, everything. Yeah, but I'm, I'm on, on this section meta program. In fact, what is meta programming? <laughs> this is my, what is meta programming? <laughs> I don't know. Like, this is my first um, time to look at it. Mariela. <laughs> <laughs> next week <laughs> it's coming next week <laughs> okay <laughs> okay okay 
All right. Um, okay. I wonder if they teach a little bit of OP in the uh, R package book club. Uh, no. No. Okay. How, yeah, you you are doing it, oh, Sham. So yeah, yeah. How 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 is it anyway? So is it good to, to... Yeah, yeah. The book, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was thinking. I was saying about the package. I'm um, using the O in package uh, because um, if something complex, big, uh, so O, yeah. All right. So I think let me see one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Writing our code in C plus plus. Joan. What? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's an RCPP package, which uh, yeah. I think uh, just straight up writes our C codes or C plus. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. really great connection. Uh, how, what's the name of the guy who, who made it? That's a really, really um, good programmer. Um, Damn. Is it Francois uh, Cholet? No. That Dick, Dick Hoover, Dick. Can't, can't remember, but one time on a GitHub issue on Docker, he, he, I asked, I, I reported the bug and he said, I'm completely nuts. And <laughs> 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 I was so, so proud of myself to get uh, flamed from him. <laughs> No, right. It's uh, Dirk Adel Buttle. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that guy seems to be crazy. He's written a lot of R, C, C plus, and he, he is a C C plus plus cop, more or less. Okay, so it's like um, I mean, we only write C plus plus because we need um speed in R or what? I think so. I think it's used for for loops even. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's speed. It, um, I, I mean, Mariella probably, or again, has a lot more packages which uses C++ because she uses genetics. And with genetics, we're talking about lots of lots of data. Probably. Yeah, usually okay. the ones that are, are faster are, are written in C++. <laughs> yeah. I think I have one thing that maybe, um, uh, I will ask um, uh, Hannes, do you answer one of my questions at that time? Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, um, that's um, meta programming. Oh, it's meta programming? Yeah, that's the that ah. question. That, that's what you call meta programming. Oh, okay, okay. Let me, let me wait until we call meta programming. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's wait. Um, I was like, let you explain it to me because I don't understand it, it yet, but I just copy the code and go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the Stack Overflow Warriors or something, you know, that's like. Yeah, yeah. but I didn't understand the code, but I asked the question and uh, you gave me the answer, but I see the desktop, but I didn't understand. Okay, it's in the code works. I will ask you maybe in this session, but now you say it's meta programming. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I probably that was R lang. Can you show it again? Uh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, there, there you say the uh, double exclamation marks and stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's meta programming. Okay. So, it, it's it's more or less you 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 want the variable to actually be used as call name or something like this. So yeah, all oh, right. I, I think I know that actually. Yeah, I've tried to use like a a pass in a, as a function argument a name to a column. I think that's when you use sim exclamation exclamation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, let me not jump fast. We will see, uh, Mariela. I have a question for you for next week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think um, today we finish early. Um, yeah. If there is no more question, uh, we can uh, me see you next week. All right. Okay. Thank you, Shem. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.